Welcome to Power Today with internationally acclaimed pastor and evangelist, Brother R. W. Shambach. From tent revivals in America's urban centers to major venues around the world, Brother R. W. Shambach touches millions of lives daily with his message of hope, proclaiming the saving, healing power of Christ. And now, with over 50 years of dynamic ministry service, he is bringing this life-changing gospel into your home. This is Power Today with Brother R. W. Shambach. God didn't call the newspapers and the TV the TV analysts to condemn the church. God has a way of doing it himself. Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar carried them away because God permitted it. And I want you to know that we're living in a day when things are happening that God's trying to get his church back to being a church. It's going to do what God ordained it to do. And it's time for God to do his thing in this last day. Let the church be the church. It's time to heal the sick. Time to cast out devils. Time to bring deliverance to the people if we'll just be obedient to the voice of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and praise him, everybody. I've been reading from this 137th Psalm, just the first four verses. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, there we wept, when we remembered Zion. Now I started at the end, remembrance, the mind, that's the battleground. And the second thing is, they wept. You know there's a whole lot of weeping going on in the church. Do you know God called us his laughing people? Abraham. It was God who instigated the first laugh. Did you know that? God came to Abraham and he said, Abraham, take a look at your wife. Ninety years old, she's going to bring forth a child. And it said, Abraham fell on his face and laughed. <laughs> a preposterous promise. God always, if he's telling you something is preposterous, fall on your face and laugh. You're laughing at the devil. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Somebody said, well, she's too old to reproduce. Not if God said she's going to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. It's not time to weep. Oh, but I can remember my past sins. You don't know what I've done. Oh, I belong to the church, but I know that God loves me, but all I can do is weep. I have the loss of loved ones. Thank God. Listen to me. We all buried loved ones, but they're not lost. They're in the arms of Jesus. That's what it's all about. It's no time to weep. When my sister died, I stood by that casket rejoicing, and people walked by me and said, how can you stand there and rejoice when your sister's gone? I said, she ought to be weeping for me. I got to hang around in this whole messy world while she's in the arms of Jesus. This is what it's all about. We're preaching the gospel. It's no time to weep. It's time to rejoice. It is time to weep over the lost. I'm not talking about having laughing meetings. I said, I'm not talking about having laughing meetings. I've had people come into my revival meetings and start laughing. I said, oh, I ain't time to laugh. Now hush. Time for me to preach the word. Even though we are God's laughing people, but we laugh at the preposterous promises. When God tells us that he's going to do something, we can laugh at it, his promises. We can laugh because he has made promises to you and me. Hallelujah. 
when the doctor says there's no more hope. He said, you're going to die and not live. <laughs> what are you laughing about? You don't know like I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even you confuse the devil because he wonders why you're laughing. It's the wrong reaction. You're supposed to be weeping. Yeah, but you know the promise. God said he'll deliver you out of all of your troubles. No matter what kind of problems come your way, it's not over till it's over. Some of you have been going through hell, and the people in the church have been pointing their finger at you, saying, you must be sinning, going through all that mess. But I've come to tell you, uh -uh, God's getting ready to use you. The devil has been accusing you, and you are going to be used of God in this last day in a supernatural way. It's no time to weep. Let him talk. It's time to laugh and let the world know we're children of God. Hallelujah. My son's on drugs. My daughter's walking the streets. Oh, can you do something about it? Rejoice. Don't you let the devil steal your joy. This ain't no time to hang your harp on a willow tree. It's time to rejoice. Hallelujah. God wants us to sing praises. He wants us to shout the victory. Can you shout amen? When he said, sorrow may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We wept. Back is against the wall. I can't pay my bills. What am I going to do? I met a woman like this in Chicago some years ago. She interrupted my service walking down an aisle, holding a piece of paper in her hand, and weeping. I got off the platform and went down and met her. I said, what you crying for? I got a dispossessed. I said, what's that? <laughs> she said, I'm behind four months in my rent. And they're going to put me out on the street in the morning. I said, the devil's a liar. <laughs> she said, but the dispossessed, Brother Shep, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> I took it, crumbled it up, and I threw it behind the platform. And it says, you're looking at the wrong thing. And I said, you got a promise in that book. God said he would meet all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It's nothing but a trick of the devil to take away your joy and put weeping in your spirit. This is no time to weep, but it's time to rejoice. She said, but Brother Sam, <laughs> my mama's blind. She's been blind for 38 years, and all I can see, there's the mind, all I can see is my blind mama sitting out there on the step. Oh, what am I going to do? I said, shut up! That's what you're going to do. See, now, as a pastor, I couldn't do that. But as an evangelist, I can do that. I mean, I ain't got time. I said, when's this dispossessed? 10 o'clock in the morning, this Sunday night. I mean, God's got to do something quick here. She said, but Brother Shambach, I don't know what to do. I gave the man $50, but he threw it back at me. Said he wanted it all, or he's calling the sheriff and go put me out on the street. And I said, sit down here in the front row. I left my notes and left everything, but I stood in front of her and I preached for 30 minutes. I preached all the faith I could into her heart. I didn't take the offering yet. Then I looked at her, stood in front of her. It's time to take the offering. 
she looked at me and said, eh, Brother Shamba, <laughs> remember me? I need money. I said, I know you do. Where's your pocketbook? I said, I'm a good listener. I heard you say you threw $50 to that man. He threw it back. I said, I ain't throwing nothing back. And I said, where's your pocketbook? She said, my mama got it. I said, get it. And she got up in a huff. She's mad. She's mad at me. I knew she'd get glad, though. I mean, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, he's supposed to be there. And I saw her coming with her purse. I turned my back. I, did, I didn't know whether she was going to hit me on the head with a purse or what. And she dropped something in that book, in that bucket. And I had, didn't know her mother was there. And I said, put your blind mama there on the front. You stand behind her. I'm going to pray for blind mama first. Laid hands on her. And I said, you blind spirit in the name of Jesus, come out of the eye. Now, in my spirit, I knew God healed her, but there was no evidence of it. But faith is the evidence of things not seen. I don't have to see it. I knew God healed that woman. And I said, Mama, will you do something for me? She said, I'll do anything you ask me. I said, the whole way home, I want you to thank God for perfect sight. Till your head hits the pillow. And I said, if you do what I tell you, you'll wake up with perfect vision. 38 years blind. Then I laid hands on her daughter, the dispossessed. And I said, Lord, I don't know how to pray for this. Just do it, Jesus. <laughs> do it. Everybody say, do it. She come back the next night, <laughs> come in those doors, a jumping and a squealing and a holler. I leaped off the platform and I said, stop, hush woman. She said, don't you remember me? I said, I know who you are, but I ain't letting this sermon get by me. Why didn't you come to church like that last night? She said, how'd I come? I went, ah, that devil's gonna put me out on the street. It ain't no time to weep. It's time to rejoice. Sorrow may be enduring for the night, but I come to tell you, joy is coming in the morning. You don't know how close you are to your miracle. I said, come on down here, girl. I know you got a testimony. And she told the story that I just told you, but she said, this morning I was awakened with the smell of coffee brewing, bacon frying, homemade biscuits in the oven. Brother Perky, make you hungry, don't it? And she said, I sat straight up in my bed and I looked over in my blind mama's bed and it was empty. She said, I went out into the kitchen, and there was my blind mama. And I said, Mama, what you doing? What? <laughs> she said, Brother Shambach told me if I'd praise God the whole way home, I'd wake up with perfect vision. And she said, Honey, you've been making my breakfast for 38 years, but I thought I'd make you the best breakfast you ever had. I got 20 20 vision in my eye. Hey! She said, Brother Shamba, we didn't eat no breakfast, we had church in the kitchen. Now she said, I started praying, Lord, oh Lord, Lord, if you can open Mama's eyes, you can pay the rent. Take your time, Lord, you got two hours yet. Boy, when God does something for you, that faith begins to mount. 
You can believe God for anything. Can you shout amen? Hallelujah. She said, eight o'clock, the mailman came. I ran down and got the mail. And you know how when you're looking for money, but instead of money, there were four more bills. Isn't that just like the devil? Here you are trusting God for money, and you got more bills. She said, it didn't bother my faith. I just laid them on the table. And I said, Lord, while you're paying the rent, catch these four while you're at it also. Hey! Ten o'clock. He's going to be there. Nine o'clock, she got a phone call. One hour to go. He may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. Nine o'clock in the morning, she got a phone call from a woman. And she said, you so-and-so? Sure am. Thirty years ago, you loaned me some money. You remember me? Sure don't. She said, 30 years ago, you bar I borrowed money from you, and I never gave it back. Now do you remember me? She said, I sure recollect you now. <laughs> but she said, I never thought I'd get it back. She said, honey, I never thought I'd pay it back. But she said, last night, oh, God have mercy, <laughs> last night, Sunday night, she was window shopping in downtown Chicago when an overwhelming force got a hold of her and dragged her down State Street. And she stood in front of the Pacific Garden Mission. That's where Billy Sunday got saved. She said, I ain't never been to a mission in my life. And that power that brought me down there took me inside, and I sat on the back seat, and that man of God preached for about 20 minutes. And when he gave an altar call, I got up to go out, but the same power dragged me to that altar, and I confessed my sin, and she said, I heard the voice of God. He said, now I can talk to you. Do you remember the woman that you borrowed money from 30 years ago? God said, I want you to pay it back with 10% interest for 30 years. She said, I know you have it. She said, Lord, I don't know how to get in touch with her, but I'll find her and I'll send her a check. God said, no check. She needs it by 10 o'clock. God knows your deadline. I said, he knows your deadline. He knows your deadline. She said, I don't know how, I don't know how to get in touch with her. God, her said, God said her phone number's 854-3746. God knows your telephone number. God knows your address. God knows when your deadline is. Hallelujah. God always on time. Can you shout amen? She came. She came, and she brought me a check for $1,000. It was a tithe off of that. $10,000. She went back at quarter to 10 and put four months back rent and four months in advance and brought me $1,000 the next night. And I said, devil, nah, 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 nah. That devil ain't got no sense. I said, that devil ain't got no sense. It ain't no time to weep. It's time to rejoice. It's time to praise God. It's no time to hang your heart on a willow tree. My God, get it off of there. It's time to sing a song in Zion. Woo-wee! Ha-ha! Listen. I wish I had time to preach this all. They all didn't act the same. Ezekiel and Daniel was carried away. And Ezekiel says, I sat where they sat. 
In other words, he was in the same mess they were in. You can be in the same mess somebody else is, but you don't have to weep like they're weeping. Are you listening to me? He said, I sat where they sat. And all of a sudden, he said, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me, and I had a vision of a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Hallelujah. Daniel was one that lived right in Babylon, and he was one of the leaders in Babylon. There's always somebody that God has that's not going to give in to the devil. And I made up my mind, I'm going to be that one. I'm going to shout. I'm going to praise God. No matter what the devil tries to do, he may try to kill you, but it's no time to weep. It's time to get back on your feet. It's time to get your heart off of that willow tree. Come on! That's the trouble with the church. It has the harps hanging on the willow. That's the problem. We don't have enough Christians playing their harps. We got too many spear throwers instead of harp players. But it's time to get that harp off of the willow tree. It ain't over, folks. God's given you a song. Amen. David said, I'm going to praise him three times a day. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him in the noontime. I'm going to praise him when the sun goes down. And then all of a sudden he said, mm -hmm, this thing feels so good, I think I'll write a new psalm and I'll praise him seven times. I'll praise him on my early rise and I'll praise him on my way out to work. I'll praise him at the lunchtime hour. I'll praise him at coffee break. I'll praise him on the way home. I'll praise him at the supper table. And then when I go to bed, I'm going to praise him seven times a day. It's time to rejoice. It's time to praise God. It's time to get the harp off of the willow. It's time to sing the song. You may be in a strange land of sorrow, but don't let the devil steal your song. Hallelujah. This is your night. Some of you have been weeping, but God's going to take them tears from you and give you joy. I said he's going to give you joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't know what's ahead of you. God got your life in his hand. This is his promise. Your life is hid with Christ in God. You're not your own, but you've been bought with a price. You belong to God. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. If you're living in sin, get rid of your sin. If you're playing this thing at both sides, I want you to get rid of it. It's time to get right with God. And then it's time to cry out to him. He said, if my people that are called by name will humble themselves and pray and seek God and repent, he said then, they will hear me from heaven. I want you to know the answer's on the way, but God's waiting on repentance from the church. It's time to get right with God. It's time to get rid of adultery. It's time to get rid of drinking booze. It's time to get rid of the sick of nicotine habit. Those things that are keeping you from God. This is your night. He wants to give you a song. You ready for it? You ready for it? You may not be in open sin. You may be bound with fear and doubt and unbelief. You want to get rid of the weeping? You want to take your harp off the willow tree? See how quick you can get down here. I'm going to pray for you. You may not be saved. If you're not saved, come on down here. You've gone through fear? Come on down here. You need a miracle in your life? Come on down here.
Some of you have your back against the wall. Some of you got the divorce papers in the mail. But I come to tell you, it ain't over till it's over. God's got a miracle for you. He's going to turn your sorrow into joy. Joy's coming in the morning. This is your time for a miracle. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You may have got a bad report from the doctor, but the next time you go back, he's going to give you a good report. He is the great physician. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I sat where they sat. I'm not going to be like everybody else. I have preachers coming to me. You know what they tell me? Shambach, it's all right for you to take a drink. We're all doing it. I said, you a lying devil. We ain't all doing it. I never tasted beer or wine or liquor in my life. I spent three years in the Navy and never touched it. God kept me from it. And now some so-called preacher going to tell me it's all right to drink. He's going to go to hell with his bottle. God wants to deliver you and set you free. Come on, shout amen. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You got the bad report. The next one's going to be a good report. Are you ready? You can't sleep at night? You better set the alarm tonight. You're going to sleep like a baby. This is your night. Set the alarm because joy is coming in the morning. You're going to wake up healed tonight, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, joy is coming in the morning. You're going to be rejoicing of what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. You're a child of God. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. That devil meant it for your harm, but God's going to turn around and make it for your good. You're going to come out smelling like a rose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's been bragging on you. That's why you've been going through all this hell. Brother Schembach is grateful for all of you faithful partners and friends whose generous gifts are responsible for bringing this program to multitudes of needy people. Remember, our prayer partners are standing by to pray with you, even after this broadcast comes to a close. You can also reach us by writing to us at Shambach Miracle Revivals, P.O. Box 9009, Tyler, Texas, 75711. If you're in Canada, write to us at P.O. Box 33089, Edmonton, Alberta, T5P 3Z0. You can also visit our website at shambach.org. Welcome to Power Today with internationally acclaimed pastor and evangelist, Brother R. W. Shambach. From tent revivals in America's urban centers to major venues around the world, Brother R. W. Shambach touches millions of lives daily with his message of hope, proclaiming the saving, healing power of Christ. And now, with over 50 years of dynamic ministry service, he is bringing this life-changing gospel into your home. This is Power Today with Brother R. W. Shambach. I spent five years with a man of God, and when God moved me away, and he moved me into my own ministry, Brother Allen said to me, what do you want, Brother Shambach? What do you want me to do? I said, all I want you to do is lay them hands on me and give me an impartation of the same spirit that you have. Because everything I learned, I learned at his side. And thank God, the ministry that I've been engaged in for over many years, <laughs> I have seen the handiwork of God. I've seen outstanding miracles take place. These two eyes cannot doubt the miracle working power of Christ. And these witnesses are looking down upon us. And the ones that I want to talk about are those that 
subdued kingdoms, stopped the mouths of lions, and quenched the violence of, fa of, of fire. And I'd like to title this as what faith can do. And God has given us faith to put it to work that can do what they have done. Subdue kingdoms like Joshua and like David of old. You may think there's no more kingdoms to be taken, but I want you to know there's a lot of them out there that are waiting for you. And it's time to get up out of our church pew and do what God called us to do and receive a double portion of that anointing that destroys the yoke because we're living in the greatest day in church history. Now, we've seen outstanding miracles, as I mentioned earlier, all over Africa. There's a nation in Africa that has 80% of its population with this foul disease called AIDS. Dying because of the sins of the flesh. But yet revival is taking place there in, in Africa. If you saw Brother Bonke's film, four million people. He has three million conversions, all signed cards. Three million people that come to Christ. Why do they, we see it there? Because of the hell that they've been going through in Africa. And when I see that, I get blessed. When I see people aborting babies in this country, when I see same-sex marriages, I'm telling you folks, I am thrilled to death. The devil's doing his thing now, but time is coming when God's going to do his thing, and we're going to see a multitude of souls coming to Christ right here in America. He's going to do it again, and he's going to use you in this last day to bring deliverance to the people that need a miracle in their life. Hallelujah. What do you want God to do for you? I want to see him use you and give you a double portion of that anointing so that you can set the captives free. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Subduing kingdoms. Joshua, the son of Nun, who was the leader of of God's people when they came out of bondage. He succeeded Moses. What a man to follow. I'd hate to follow Moses. After all, he did. But he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan and every bit of ground that the soles of your feet tread upon, you shall possess the land. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, he said, Moses is dead, but now I am going to promise you that as I was with Moses, I will be, be with you. So get up and do what I tell you to do, and every bit of ground that the soles of your feet tread on, you shall possess the land. And I believe it's about time we start walking around some property. Can you shout praise the Lord? Some of you young preachers, God called the pastor and you're looking for a church. Walk around some property. I'll never forget the first church that we started in Newark, New Jersey. I was preaching from this first chapter of, of uh, Joshua. And I didn't know I was preaching to me. And I got to that point where he said, every bit of ground that the soles of your feet tread on, you shall possess it. I couldn't wait to get out of that building. I was preaching to me. I got it under conviction. And I said, I want to get out of here. And I said to some of the preachers with me, come with me. Where are you going, Brother Shambach? I said, I'm going to walk around the building. I was just renting the building, but I'm going to walk around it now. What are you going to do that for? I said, didn't you hear me preach tonight? I'm going to lay some footprints around this building. I'm going to claim it for God. You know what they said to me? You go ahead and walk. We'll wait in the car for you. If you're going to claim something, you've got to do it all by yourself. Everybody believes your elevator don't go the whole way up. You're a few cents short of a dollar. Hallelujah. You lost your mind. Thank God you lost it. 
Now we got the mind of Christ. And you put on the mind of Christ, you'll begin to do what he did. He healed the sick. He cast out devils. He brought deliverance to the people. And that same mind is in you so you can do what God called you to do. Can you shout praise the Lord? I walked around that building all by myself laying down footprints. I got one regret. We should have walked around the whole city. Because the next day after I walked around that building, a for sale sign was out in front. And I was running the thing, $100 a night. But now I see a for sale sign. I pulled it out. Took it down to the realtor whose name was on that sign. Feast and Feast Realtors. That's a good old Irish name. Feast and Feast. Jewish as you can get. I took that down to him and laid it on the desk. And I said, who put this sign on my property? He said, where... Where'd you get that sign? I said, 652 High Street. He said, I just put that thing in there. I said, you're the culprit. I said, I come down here to tell you my building is not for sale. He said, who are you? Now I'm an evangelist, but I said, uh, my name's Pastor R.W. Shambach. See, that's my building now. And now I'm a pastor. And that's my church. He said, oh, you're the man running the building. I said, yes, sir. Well, he, he said, it is for sale, Reverend, if you want to buy it. He said, let me just tell you, they turned down $260,000 for the building. I didn't care if they turned down a million. That's my building. He said, you have an offer you want to give them? I said, well, yeah. What offer do you have? I said, nothing. He said, are you sure you're a preacher? Well, I said, I, I believe in starting low. You know, when God picks you up and he picks me up, he picks up a nothing. God always starts with nothing so he can do something with it. Can you shout amen? You may not have a building now, but you can walk around it and God will give you. He starts with nothing. And if you have nothing, you're headed for the greatest miracle of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No, I, I had no bank account. I, I didn't know how to buy and sell things. I just left A.A. Allen. He would put me on a salary, and, and, and now I'm on my own. You know, when I was working with him, I had no burdens to bear. He just gave you a paycheck. But now you're carrying the load. You got to believe God for everything. You preachers know what I'm talking about. And now, here I am talking about buying the building, ain't got no money. Well, he said, Reverend, uh, come back and talk to me when you get some money. Well, I said, now wait, wait, I ain't done yet. I said, I, I want you to call the owners of this building. It was a Jewish YWHA, Young Women's Hebrew Association, and an insurance company, the North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company, bought the property, and they were renting it out, and I was renting it. And I said, I want you to call down there and tell them I want to buy the building. He said, I ain't going to waste my money. I pulled a $10 bill out. Laid it on his desk. I said, I'll pay for the call. Call him. I'm, su I'm subduing kingdoms. He said, all right. And he put that swivel chair his around. And I, his back was against me. And I heard him saying, hello. Oh, I'm sorry. He said, this call must have switched. Uh, past the switchboard. I didn't mean to disturb you. He says, that's all right. What? And I heard him talking to the gentleman, and he said, I have a 
crazy preacher here. <laughs> and he's the one that's renting the building. He wants us to buy it. And he asked me to call you folks. And I told him, I told him you folks turned down $260,000. And he said he offered nothing. <laughs> but he said, I don't think he's done yet. <laughs> and he sort of held the phone. He said, Reverend, he said, to, go ahead and sell it to you. But he said, I told you now, 260000 Do you have a figure? And I said, yeah, God just dropped it in my heart. $75,000. He said, I can't tell him that. I told you they just refused 260000 and you're going to offer him 75000 I said, tell the man. It ain't your building. You're just a realtor. Tell the man. And I heard him tell the man. He said to offer you $75,000 for the building. And I told him, there ain't no way you're going to. What? But yeah, yeah, I'll tell him. All right, sir. Bye. <laughs> and he turned around to me and says, you ain't crazy, are you? I said, no, sir, didn't think I was. <laughs> I said, what did the man say? He said, man said, sell it to you for $75,000. And tell him we'll take a tax receipt on the rest of it. We had such a good way, a good year in real estate that we'll get a tax break by giving it to him for seven five. I said, well, maybe we can call him back and get it for nothing. <laughs> but the Lord dropped that 75000 in my heart, and that's what I told him. And then he started to get his pencil out, and he said, well, Reverend, he said, it looks like you can buy it. How, how much of a down payment you going to pay? <laughs> you way ahead of me, aren't you? I said, nothing. He said, just when I think you're getting sense, you're talking crazy again. You know, God's people, the world can't understand us. We don't do business like they do. We put faith to work. We believe God that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. That every bit of ground the soles of your feet tread upon, you're going to possess the land. And I laid down some footprints, and I believe God. Hallelujah! There's a cloud of witnesses up there saying, go ahead, Samba. Church folks will say, you're crazy. You ain't never get that. But the witnesses are saying, go ahead, do it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad somebody's cheering you on up there? We have a crowd of witnesses around us cheering us on. I come here to, to, to the, the midsection of the world to raise hell. I, I, I come to tell you, you're going to make it. I said, you're going to make it. God's going to use you like you've never been used before. He's going to channel miracles through your life. You're going to have faith come alive. And you're going to do what God called you to do. Can you shout yes? Hallelujah. Now this was a Friday afternoon. He said, now, now Reverend, you've got to have something for me to start the papers going. Oh, I said, how much you need? He said, well, how much you got? I said, oh, he said, I don't mean that because you, know, you ain't got nothing. <laughs> I said, well, this is Friday. I'm preaching there every night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Monday, I'll be in your office at 9 o'clock in the morning. How much you need? Well, he said, $5,000 will get us started. I said, good. I'll bring it to you. And I went back and preached and took an offering. I told the folks we'd buy in the building now. This is God's house. Monday morning, $5,000. He said, all right, Reverend. He said, now we can get the paperwork started. How much of a down payment are you going to make? 
I said, I just made it. <laughs> See, I never bought anything. I didn't know what he was talking about. I thought I gave him the down payment. He said, no, 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 that's the earnest money. Get the thing started. What kind of a down payment? I said, well, wait a minute. I'll get the word. <laughs> now, the thing only cost 75000 And the Lord dropped it in my spirit and said, tell him you'll give him 30000 I said, is 30000 all right? He said, you don't need that much. I said, well, that's the figure I got. But can I give it to you 10,000 in 30 days, and 10,000 in another 30, and 10,000 in another 30? that will be 90 days. He says, yeah, we can do it that way. I said, well, do it. That's the word I got. And I preached every day and every night. 30 days come by, $10,000. Took it right to, the, right to the real. 30 days more passed, $10,000. Took it down, laid it on the desk. Twenty-nine days passed, and since that time I went on radio, spending money on radio every day. Twenty-nine days, tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon, I need another 10,000, and I ain't got nothing. I'm back to ground zero. <laughs> I went to the post office, picked up my mail, got six dollars in the mail. I spread it out to the Lord. I said, Lord, all you need now is $9,994, and we got this thing licked. And I said, Father, I'm, a, I, I, I'm just going to sit in my office and wait. I, I prayed. I prayed enough now. I, I'm going to wait now. And that's what, you know, Pentecostal folks don't like to wait. We, we want it right now. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And I went in there and waited and waited and waited until it was 25 minutes to 12. I had to be at the bank at 12. I said, Lord, you run this close. <laughs> Some of the preachers working with me said, what are you going to do? I said, nothing. I started with nothing. I said, that ain't my building, that's God's building, and I, he's a better businessman than that. He ain't going to let the devil have $25,000. He's got more sense than that. Well, you ain't got 10000 I said, it's on the way. Finally, I saw a little lady walking up the street, and I ran out to meet her, and I said, give it to me! She said, Brother Shambach, what's wrong with you? I said, nothing. Give it to me. She said, how do you know I've got something for you? I said, I'll talk to you later. Go in my office, but give it to me. And she got in her purse and pulled out a cashier's check for $10,000. I said to the devil, nah, 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 nah. Hallelujah. God gave us the bill. It's still operating as a church. A pastor's in there because I walked around the thing. What do you want God to do for you? Those witnesses are up there cheering you on. Don't look for your church leaders to cheer you on. They're going to try to drown you out. They're going to try to shut you up. They don't believe in what you're doing anyhow. I know what I'm talking about. I know what it is to be in the church. I was in an organized church, wasn't I, Brother Perky? I think you were my presbyter, weren't you? Church of God? You heard about the man going into town looking for the church of God? And he stopped the first guy and said, can you tell me where the church of God is? He said, yeah, three blocks down. Make, no, he said, that's Baptist church. Going further, five blocks. Make a left. No, that's a Lutheran church. Uh, turn around and go back ten blocks. He said, 
Now, he said, well, come to think of it, God don't have a church in this town. He don't know how true he was. God's looking for men and women that will be obedient to his voice, launch out in faith, and do what he's called them to do. You got somebody cheering you on. If you want a tent, go buy one. Say, ain't got no money. Buy it anyway. Hallelujah. Buy that church property. Hallelujah. You say, I ain't got nothing. That's where you start. God's going to bless you and he'll open windows. He'll open doors. He'll make a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. Turn around and look at somebody and say, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe God. Let me get back to this. What faith can do when you learn how to put it to work. Subduing kingdoms. David, I don't have time to get into David, but you know, we have some men who were great missionaries. There was one I was reading about, John Getty. John Getty, who was a missionary that in the New Hebrid, in the New Hebrid, Hebrides. And he spent his life over there, and he went there. There was no Christians. And I, I, you know, I, I love to read about that. People going into an area where there ain't nobody there, nobody Christian. And he stayed there, I don't know how many years, until his ministry was done. And he went home to the Lord, and on the tombstone, it's still there. New John Getty. When he came to the New Hebrides, there were no Christians. When he died, put the date, there were no heathen. The whole nation got saved. And I believe it's about time we start believing God for nations. Amen. We believe God for families. We believe God for neighborhoods. We believe God for cities. Now it's time to believe God for the whole nation. I'm talking about the good old U.S. of A. Can you shout amen? I'm getting tired of him. God's moving in other nations and countries. I want to see him move right here in America. And do you know it's already started? I said it's already started. I was up in the Boston area uh, in, in a Portuguese church. Are those Portuguese fellows here? Where you at? Stand up, brother. That's the church I went to. God bless you. I went to a Portuguese church up there, and they've been in revival for over three years. And that pastor was kicked out of his organization. And I said, man, that's the best kick you ever got. And revival started. Every day, they're on their face praying from 3 to 6 and from 10 to midnight. Every day, seven days a week. And God sent a mighty revival to that city of Boston. I spent three days there, and I tell you, it changed my life. Just to see how God is moving Angels are being seen, flying in and flying out. I had one of them girls come to me, and she said, Brother Sambach, you got a big angel by your side. I said, i got two of them. One's goodness and one's mercy. They follow me everywhere I go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Revival has started there. And it's starting to come down. All the hell that's been going on in this nation. But I tell you, folks, the devil's doing his thing. But God's getting ready to do his thing. God's raising up an army of young men. It's going to be the young people, young men and young women that's going 
going to go out and they're going to preach the gospel and they're going to put their faith to work. We're going to see the lost saved. We're going to see miracles take place. Things that you just read about, you're going to see it happen. Some people, you ain't going to have time to lay hands on them. You're just going to speak the word and God's going to bring it to pass. Can you shout amen? Speak the word only. Speak the word only. Speak the word only. And I know my servant will be healed. We're coming back to this. That's what faith can do. Don't you think it's about time we put it to work? What do you want God to do for you? Whatever you want. He said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you got them. Hallelujah. Somebody said, where is it? I ain't showing it yet, but I got it. I got my miracle. Hallelujah. Brother Schembach is grateful for all of you faithful partners and friends whose generous gifts are responsible for bringing this program to multitudes of needy people. Remember, our prayer partners are standing by to pray with you, even after this broadcast comes to a close. You can also reach us by writing to us at Schembach Miracle Revivals, P.O. Box 9009, Tyler, Texas, 75711. If you're in Canada, write to us at P.O. Box 33089, Edmonton, Alberta, T5P 3Z0. You can also visit our website at shambach.org.